technical interview is unlike any other job interview. It's a tough and rigorous process that tests your coding skills, problem solving abilities, and personality. But it can get a lot easier if you're well prepared and know what to expect. Join Interview Kickstarts co founder Ryan Vallis in a one hour interactive webinar on how you can crack technical interviews at top tech firms the Interview Kickstart way. We have helped over 5,000 engineers receive life changing offers from Bang and Tier 1 tech companies in the US. Your dream company is just one step away. Sign up for a webinar today. Hello. Oh. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Good. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Um, getting busy at work, but um, it's been a long day, so mm. I hope you don't mind. I'm drinking. Uh, yeah. Sure. Cheers. <laughs> is that your? Uh, is that your view, or is that a? No, it's a virtual background. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, this will be my view sometime <laughs> later. Yeah. So, um, yes. so I was wondering, um, I, I was wondering if I could work on a problem with you that I come up with that I'm facing, actually. Okay. And, um, you know, get your thoughts on it. Um, <clears throat> but did you have something that you wanted um, just to get a sense of if, if you didn't, if I didn't suggest this, um, what kind of problem you might? Yeah, yeah sure. So uh, first, uh, are, are, you, are we talking about the um, system design problem or? Um, I would call it an NLP data science, maybe machine learning, um, to some extent, system design kind of a question. Okay. Uh, sure, we can do that as long as it's uh, you know within the scope of uh, interview problems. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. If it's not if if it's not something you're comfortable with, absolutely. Sure. I'm just kind of um, I'm just kind of curious if we didn't do that because it, it might help me think it might um, help me prepare for a later one if um, yeah uh, so like what was the topic um, yeah so I was thinking about uh, something in the lines of uh, ranking system which okay. is uh, it's kind of a common question people ask, but yeah, but we can do something. I guess if, if you have a problem, you, you would like to work on together that, that we can do as well. Yeah. And, way. And, rank, and ranking of, of what? A ranking of uh, newsfeed. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I'm trying to pull up the right... Um, I should have, yeah. So I, I'm a little behind here. Uh, let's see now. Right. Um, oh, 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 that's why. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get the right um, sure. window open here. Um, yeah, okay. I, I have a, I've got all these files and all these different things and I have this way of organizing and it just takes me a while to get configured because I hadn't um, got this whole Emacs set up to handle interview kickstart. Mm -hmm. I bet uh, I, I bet you don't use Emacs or VI, right? No, that's something that I yeah, never <laughs> got a chance to learn, and uh, yeah, so. Oh, darn, why isn't this? 
Um, this is not behaving correctly, darn it. Okay. Um, so I will just um, go into Bruce Force here. Okay, I'm getting better now. Okay. Um, uh, two. Okay. And um, oh, Francie's coming back. Naomi, my daughter likes to come in and interrupt my videos. And now she's being all silent. Um, well, as long as she's silent and not distracting. Um, okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, ranking of news feeds. Um, so, he here's my thing. So, let me run this by you and see if it seems comfortable. So, the goal is to build, to create data for autocomplete or auto suggest. Um, so like when you type in, in Google, you know, you might type in, uh, the declaration of, and it will give independence or mm -hmm. sovereignty or human rights. Right. Yep. And, you know, um, uh, independence will get the highest ranking. Um, so, but this is, um, so we need to, to build, um, you know, data to tell autocomplete what to do. Mm -hmm. And the focus is medical. In particular, we want to identify symptoms related to body, body parts. So, um, you know, so what we want is like, um, you know, head hurts um, or eyes hurt or bloodshot eyes, but not mm -hmm. bloodshot bones. That, that, that would be nonsensical. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, so the... Um, you know, so the input is um, initially just a list of body parts, okay. including organs like uterus, uh, ovaries, and then more obvious things like hands, head, eye. And then a list of symptom types like hurt or, or pain. And then within pain, there's a bunch of phrases like hurts, um, hurting, um, is hurting. Right. And so some of the phrases are before body part, and then some of them are after. So there's two types of phrases. So you might say um, head or arm hurts, elbow hurts, or elbow is hurting, head mm -hmm. is hurting, um, or hurting head. So hurting is both a before and an after phrase type. And then, you know, sometimes you have. I mean, so like the brute, <clears throat> so like um, to start, to seed it, you can just take lists of body parts and, and multiply them. I think the correct term is to take the Cartesian product of like each body part in your list and then each phrase. So, you know, you'll generate eyes hurt, heart hurts, face hurts, bones hurt, um, or bones are hurting. Well, bones is hurting, eyes is hurting. So you'll have a, you know, so there's some problems with the brute force approach. So, you know, you could have is hurting and are hurting, and then you're going to have to generate bones are hurting, bones is hurting. And then you're going to generate all this stuff and then feed it to human raiders to say, you know, initially relevant versus non-relevant. So, you know, like, um, so like, bones, itchy bones. So itchy is not a symptom type that would apply to bones, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, is a symptom type that would, would apply to, um, skin or whole body. Mm -hmm. Um, and so again, under the symptom type of itchy, there would be different phrases like is itchy or itches. So X is itchy, X itches or itchy X, but not is itchy x right so there's this notion of before and after phrase so um so that's like the starting point at least and so we do have some human raiders but we don't have a lot of human raiders at this point you know maybe later we'll get budget for mechanical turk 
Um, and then, um, you, you know, and, and then you can do things like, um, well, 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 why don't I stop there? And then, and so there's different, there's like how to do it. Um, and then there's questions of like data structures. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you, do you mind sharing uh, Docker something writing yeah, on? Yeah, writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Screen share. <coughs> um, oh, I need to press the share button. That's why it's not sharing. Um, so does this sound uh, appropriate, comfortable in scope? Yes. Um, Oop, as yeah. long as it's a generic problem and it's not, you know, relevant to you know specific um, work projects, uh, just to, to to potential conflicts of interest, uh, it's fine. I mean, just so far, it's yeah. So far, this is a problem we can work on together. Um, right. Right. Well, th Yoda. Mimi. Mimi, please, Mimi, I'm busy here. Naomi? Yeah, it's hard when mom, when they, my wife has to make dinner. It's hard to get total control over the kids. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, so it, it, it is ar arguably a, a generic problem. Um, it could be a different domain. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so, so, um, so yeah, like a ask me a question. Maybe. Yeah, sure. So first thing I want to, let me see if I can see what you Oh, I, did, I didn't write much. Should I write more? Like, did I? Yes, just want to yeah see some some of the examples of I guess the you know uh, the sentences or utterances yeah. you can see and I guess one question would be are we thinking about autocomplete in uh, you know character level or like word level or token level? Is That's it a good question? Yeah. Um, like for example, if I say if I type. I don't know if I want to type bone, like if I type B O, should I expect to get the bone as well? Or no, if it's like I type bone and then I, I expect to get suggestions for hurts, etc. Painful, it's painful. Yeah, yeah. So um yeah, character level. Character level? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and okay. Is it, do you, you know, do you want to work through it together or you want to, you know, work on it and get feedback or how, how would you like to, um, you know? Yeah, work on it together. Um, okay. Yeah. So, or, you know, no, um. Um, so, so this is the basic, yep. this, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so X arrows is hurting, and then, um, and then what is the uh, before, after, here. Um, so be, in other words, a before phrase is just where you take the body part and you, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> before phrase is when the phrase, um, 
is when the when the phrase comes before the body part term, right? So this would be painful um, head, painful skin, hurting mm -hmm. head, hurting skin, hurting heart. Okay. But probably not, you know, hurting, hurting uh, adrenal gland, <laughs> right? <laughs> no one would have any idea that their adrenal gland is hurting. Um, X hurts, X is hurting, X in pain. You know, that's an after kind of auto. Okay. Um, oh, so do we expect to say to get X when we say X hurts? Is that sort of thing? Um, right. So if you type in, so I, um, now let's type in actually an example. Like let's, let's just yeah. start typing it and see in the use case. Right. Um, so, so like simple, obvious autocomplete is you just type in pain and then it would, yeah. um, then it would suggest, um, like if, if I type I, then it would give, mm -hmm. you know, two things. It would give, you know, um, no, I'm sorry, not pain, um, um, you know, um, head, mm. head, eye. So if I typed in head, mm -hmm. type in head, eye, then, um, you know, based on the above mul multiplying it out, mm. the head is hurting. Yeah. Head in pain. Those would be yeah. two. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so, you know, you want to, um, preferentially, um, give some, but, but, but then, you know, if you're going to say is hurting and in pain, those are redundant, right? Because they mean the same thing, but so you actually wouldn't, so you would maybe know about in pain and in hurting, but if you saw it head yeah. high, you should say head and then maybe say is in pain and then head itches. Okay. So your you know your data structure would know about head is itching, head itches, you know, and so head itches and plus one um plus one, you know, head is itching, right? So these two guys are synonymous. And um, you know, these two guys are synonymous. So if you type head A, you know, only get um, head in pain. Yeah, and I'll call this one, you know, I'll call this one B, and I'll just call this one R. R means relevant, B means it's, it's, it's one of the best. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this B is better than that, that or, so you'll say head, so you'll only want to get head in pain and head um, is, or head itching. Okay. So, so is that kind of clear? Yeah, so also um, uh, for, for the other one, for the other after phrase, can you give an example of that one? Like how the yeah. use case for that we um well actually this so th these are after phrases right because you know this is x is hurting so the phrase comes after the body part so the the other option is the before phrase okay so you know if you type in um so i'll say example of using the four phrase completions and then example of using after phrase completion so an after phrase completion um so that means after maybe after body part phrase completion after body part before, so before body part phrase, phrase completion is where, um, well, here, to make it clearer, you know, it's, 
Um, let's body part before phrase body part. There, this makes it the, the clearest. Right, so here the body part is after the phrase. So an example would be um, um, uh, so let's see after. So then that's X hertz. Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh geez, I'm I'm keep confusing the the terminology here. So body part. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, after um, phrase is after body part. So we're calling that an after phrase because the phrase is after the body part. And then phrase is before the body part. Year. You know, and this seems like such a common problem. Everyone, you know, has to solve this. And, you know, I hope I'm not like just go gallivanting off in some, there's so much, so, some much, much simpler way. Um, but, um, so, an, so anyway, so, so an example of a phrase is before body part is before the body part would be like um, so you type in pay um, let's say you type in um, pain or let me see um, an evocative answer let me look let me go up here and see if there's some other good s sentences and um, Auto complete. Now I'm going to use the okay, um, an anatomical parts list, and then um, sort of, um, symptom phrase list. Um, well, how about there's symptom types? And then, so there's pain, um, you know, bleeding, inflamed, um, um, what's another example of a symptom? Um, itchy, hot. So these are what I'm calling symptom types, and that's why I put a hash dollar in them because that that's just a way of saying it's a concept. You know, and concepts have synonyms, and the okay. anatomical parts have synonyms too. Like, um, um, these aren't good examples of synonyms, but. Um, um, Well, let's let's say, um, oh yeah, head. So you know, so you'll have head, noggin. That's a little unrealistic, but let's just say um, that's an example of a hint synonym. Or you know, maybe you'll even do like hand, hands, palm, palms. Oh, I is a good one. I, right? I, I, eyes, etc. And then, and then, so the, so then these synonyms, these each pain it has an, each symptom type has um, um, I'll call them synonyms or really phraseologies, synonym type phraseologies. Apologies, right? So, and of course, my spelling is terrible. And there's two types, right? There's the two types is before and after. 
Um, and so, um, so what I was talking about um, for pain, let's see here, pain. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm So, um, uh, phrases after, right. Um, So, um, you know, you would say pain hurts, pain, oh no, I'm sorry, head, head hurts, head is hurting, head in pain, painful head, hurting head. And then you remember some of our other body parts were skin, let's say, or no, uterus is a good example, you know, pain. Um, so we'd have uterus hurts, uterus is hurting, uterus in pain, painful uterus, hurting uterus. Um, but, you know, itchy um, uterus, um, you know, wouldn't make sense at all, right? Um, um, you know, so the, so the task is given a phrase like itchy uterus. Um, determine whether it's um, sensible or not. Make sense? I was mute. Uh, I see, but okay. So it's the task to check if a given phrase is valid or not, or if it's to autocomplete even maybe one word on some letters to make suggestions? Well, the task is to create data. So to create a list of all and only the valid phrases to tell autocomplete what to do. Okay. There will be another thing that takes in a list of phrases and figures out the autocomplete. Okay. So it's, not, it's not an algorithm. It, it's, a, it's a language generation problem. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So basically we're talking about two parts of it. One, the yeah, language generation for valid, uh, you know, phrases. And then the other one on the autocomplete side of it. Right. And I'm not at all interested okay. in the autocomplete algorithm. Okay. Just the data generation. I see. Okay. <coughs> so okay. So on the data generation, then, um, well, it kind of depends on how. Yeah, it depends on how you would like to have the autocomplete because for the autocomplete, like the the simplest way is to use the tries data structure, right, and mm -hmm. That is given, you're given some uh, sentences, you just basically uh, fit them into that try. Uh, and then it basically includes all the valid, you know, sentences. And it's, pr it's pretty rigid, right? So it's, if it's there, it, it suggests. If it's not there, it doesn't. Um, 
kind of a hardcore that thing. But then if you want to do do something like a language model, uh, which is still based on, you know, the, 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 the data, but it's like more of a, I, I guess it's kind of more flexible. And then for that, you need to generate a lot of, you know, examples I like guess variety of examples it could be repetitive, etc. Like considering all the synonyms, all sort of stuff. Um, and for that, uh, I guess one for for either case, I guess one the simplest case would be to have a grammar with these certain, I guess, uh, token types or whatever you call, call them, um, let's say on the itchiness, pain, pain, et cetera, body parts that can, you can have template sentences, utterances, and then generate out of different combinations. That could be data. Uh, and if it generates only unique possibilities, then it, it's just, that's going to be some good data for using a trial data structure. But then if it's, if you want to be more puristic, you know, with uh, something like a language model that it's, it's more than generating the unique ones, putting some weights on the ones that are like more important or more, you know, frequent or more probable and the less probability and the ones that are less probable or less common, etc. cetera. Yes. Um, yeah, but that would be one way, I would say, uh, grammars and generating out of those grammars. Um, and this is like, I assume this is pretty, should be pretty small, you know, uh, set of sort of different utterances. It's because it's pretty specialized on this application that you're talking about rather than a very generic, you know, uh, language model for any anything that you want to search, right? It's pretty narrow, right? Um. Okay. Well, I mean, so th I mean, the concept of using a grammar could work whether it's narrow or broad. Yeah. Broad, the number of the complexity of your grammar or the number of rules will be greater. Yeah. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's in terms of yeah scaling it because grammar is harder to scale. Uh, that if if it's like a larger scale, maybe something like um, in a, a model, you know, an NLG model or something like that. Just uh, yeah, training a model would be something that makes more sense. But if it's not a larger scale grammar, I think it works well. So depending on the scale of the uh, domain, but I guess based on what I'm seeing is, I guess, pretty focused on like some, you know, let's say, I don't know, like medical terms on um, symptoms of, you know, some problems in the body, which is, should be, I, I was, I know, my guess is should be limited, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> the NL generation model, you know, to me, it seems, so the problem with any ML model is that you need the training data. And yeah. so to bootstrap, to get that training data, you know, what about starting with a grammar and then, um, you know, over time, especially when you want to give a, a ranking to every phrase, you're going to have to leave a grammar because you're going to have to leave the world of grammar and go more, more towards an NL generation model but yeah yourself there you'll use like a combination of a grammar generator to generate a lot of phrases and then have humans yeah the ones that it over generates yeah and the question of like writing a grammar or not i guess it would be also on the question of if you have any you know such sort of data maybe on a textbook or in a reference document or something that could be just read and used if 
that's the case, it could be, you know, maybe directly used for a model, training a model. Uh, but if it's not, then if you don't have, you know, phrases, utterances for this particular, you know, uh, use case, then just, uh, yeah, writing grammar would be the first thing I would say. Or based on what I, yeah. Right. And so how does one write a grammar? You know, I've heard of GRXML. You heard of GRXML? GRXML? No. Yeah. Uh, there is a, well, back in <laughs> old days, and the way that we used to do it was, um, there is an algorithm for that. Basically, you're just, there, there, there is this language, I forgot the language name, but you write the grammar is basically just simply as like writing utterances in a text file with, uh, with the, uh, within it's a particular language I forgot. Like you use like these uh, and or etc. as like and um, parameters for uh, the words that are not you know um, fixed. Let's say that, that I guess what, one example that we have, like for example, if you wanted to talk about, I don't know, restaurants, etc. Like I want to go eat something somewhere. Like, and the name of the restaurant is a variable thing that could be anything, right? So there is a there's a term I forgot the terms, but you write it similar to what you were writing here, like uh, with special uh, characters, like uh, the dollar sign or like um, the shop, etc. And then you put a generic term for that instead yeah. of, let's say, uh, bonus skin hand, etc., or like um, whatever McDonald's in and all, etc. You put restaurant name, and then then there is you, you, you're gonna have a separate file that includes all the possible uh, options for that generic term, and then uh, there is an algorithm that kind of randomly selects one of those and generates an utterance. Um, there is, I guess it was CF, I forgot, like CFG grammar. I'm not in LP anymore, I forgot all of those. <laughs> yeah, now, and you're not thinking of a finite state automata, are you? Because um, let me see, this context-free grammar, this is... Okay. Yeah, context-free grammar is a uh, CFG. It's a it's a it's a language. Um, not the language. It's, it's a I don't know. It's, uh, what do you say? Standard, you know, language for writing grammars. Basically, you have a grammar, and then you have yeah, this terminal symbols, non-terminal symbols, um, and then some rules. And then based on those rules and the symbols that you have, it generates all different possibilities. Um, right. And then there, there are diff different ways of doing it, yeah. But is there like a standard, there there's must be some standard tool. Yeah. There, there, yeah. This there are, yeah, there are algorithms for that. And I, hmm. There, there are, I think, Python packages that do this as well. Uh, I remember we used to have some customized code for that, but I'm pretty sure there is a... Uh, because this is also part of... Uh, how do you say? Part of... It's pretty standard, you know, topic in, in, in general, like NLP courses that... I had their build it and I did, they talk about this context free grammar like all over the place. And I'm pretty sure it should be packages that they do it. Yeah. Uh, automatically. It's just writing it in that language and then writing it in that language. Once you know, you know, the, the standards, it's just writing whatever you want in a text file and then, then it generates everything, all the possibilities. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's a great suggestion. It's the kind of thing that is on the tip of my tongue, but I wouldn't um, search on it. 
I just start hacking. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I've been hearing about these context-free grammars. And basically, when they say context-free, it means that context is not involved. And so the surrounding, so in other words, um, the, like, the sentence before is irrelevant to or what what does it mean to say yeah. you remember yeah so it's not like it's not uh smart to you know generate based on a context of like previous or like uh, next words it's, it's it's not it's not doesn't have anything similar to what language models do mm -hmm. it's as simple as you have some some fixed symbols that I guess that's where they call them like terminal and versus non-terminal. And then you have the ones that are not fixed. It just generates out of those with different combinations. And then when you're also writing your uh, grammar, it's, it's not just the symbols, but you can also say that, for example, you want to say my uh, whatever head, uh, is something or uh, like is hurting or hurts or is going to hurt. You know, you can have like all this. It's a, like a logical rule that you can say this or this or this should be one of them. And then you can have like ants, you know, logics. And they, they have like some sort of logics that like pretty much like uh, just uh, simple logics that you can use like and or et cetera. And then and then the, these symbols that you can replace with a list of uh, tokens from somewhere. And it basically takes the rules, those symbols and the, 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 the possible options and then generates all the possibilities. Yeah. Um, and then for that, you can also do, again, you can have generate all the unique utterances or you can generate it in like, you know, uh, with some weights, like, there is an option to weight them. Like I want to have more of these sort of utterances or the other ones, and then that's not unique. Like maybe you have, I don't know, ten uh, utterances of the same thing or pretty much similar versus like one example of another rule. So these are like things that kind of can play with it. Right. If you don't want to like have a unified, un so a uniform distribution of, of the utterances over the rules. Um, okay, so then, um, so, so the idea is to write a context, find some context-free grammar package, and then write a few of these production rules, generate yeah. phrases, and then have humans comment on the phrases, and the ones that, um, are not relevant will just get X'd out. And then yeah. I try to refine the grammar to make it generate more accurately, but you know, it's only yeah. so well, and then you get a whole bunch of phrases and then just feed them to the, the try thing. Yeah. I will make the try. Yeah. Um, and, um, So, <clears throat> where, where am I getting hung up here? But, um, so, and, and, and then you, and then there's things that it comes in waves. So, like, to actually do this in a production environment, you'll generate some things, you'll get some ratings, and then you'll realize, oh, I forgot about this other symptom. I forgot about this other free. Mm that goes under pain. You know, I already have pain. I have is hurting and hurts mm -hmm. it's like killing, you know, if it's really hurting, you say, Oh, my head is killing me. Right. Mm -hmm. so you forgot about killing. So then you generate again. And so now you have to generate and then you have to realize, um, am I generating something that hasn't been rated yet or not? And then, um, and then, so the things that, aren't generate that you haven't gotten ratings on then you want to show those to your raters but you'd prefer to show them in the full context 
In other words, this group of raiders is already raided, you know, hurt, is hurting and, you know, um, hurts, but now there's kills and is killing. And so mm -hmm. they can see how they did the others and, you know, they can go more quickly if they see what they did for others. And so, um, so trying to figure out has this been rated already or not? So maybe the way to do that, data structure wise, is to read. So you have a table of all things that have been rated, and so the column is the, the index column is is the phrase. So it would have things like uterus hurts, skin hurts, skin is hurting, itchy skin, etc. And then you know, let's say you wouldn't have um, you know sweaty. You don't have sweaty skin. Um, and so you would just hash, um, or in Python, you'd make a set of all the things, all the phrases, and then, and then you're going along. So you're generating new things and you say, oh, I'm generating a fresh, oh, I already have head is hurting, but I don't have head is killing. Mm. So then what I want to do is put head is killing right in the right place in this list. And that's what I'm struggling with. Because if I just had a set or a hash, you know, if I just hashed on the thing that would tell me quickly, yes, we have rated this versus no, we haven't rated this, that won't be any good. I want to put it in the right place in the list of phrases. You understand? Put it in... No, I didn't get the this last part. Yeah. Um, what will the basic problem is? I want to generate things. I want to like my grammar generates some stuff, and then I get all that rated. All the stuff that's generated gets rated, and then my grammar and, and it, it has a particular order that it puts the things in. Yeah. In a spreadsheet. So we have all of these things generated in a deterministic sequence, and then we have as columns what each rater gave for that. And now my grammar expands and I add more rules. And when it generates it out, it generates some new things. Um, you know, so here it had this and this, and now it's generating five things in here. And so how do I quickly tell that I'm generating new things? Um, you know, I, I generated this. Oh, I'm, I, it's generating, right? So it generates this. Oh, I already have this. Oh, now I'm generating this. Oh, I don't have this. Um, and then it, then it generates, oh, I already have this. So, um, you know, I'll pull in the data what I have. Is, <laughs> is it clear? Hmm. Wouldn't it be like, um, I guess a hash? I mean, just a dictionary of that, just uh, the ones that you already have and searching there or? Right, but the dictionary isn't ordered. Um, right. Are you on order? Yeah. Um, there is a there is a version of it which is ordered, and in Python I don't know like which language you use, but uh, in Python there is ordered, I think ordered dict, and then it's also similar to it's similar to what people do in you know building um uh what do you say cache data structures, like, uh, what's it, I would say, caching, at least, sorry, a lot of caching. <laughs> uh, when you, when you have basically you tie a dictionary or hash table with some order, like some, another data structure, tie these two together. So that's something, in interviews, they asked you to implement, but there's, uh, I think there's this order dict, I think, or something like that in the Python. Uh, 
it's just kind of similar. Yeah, it's 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 the I guess what you're asking is to be able to search efficiently and uh, at the same time being able to index it uh, with an order, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. But what did you say? You you said in interviews something. What did you say? in interviews? What this comes up? Yeah, there is this design of LRU cache and uh, and it's LFU cache with the coding problem. So these are kind of um, similar ideas that you want to be able to, you know, access something uh, in constant time and also have an order of them in some some order that this should go first, this should go second, and then it's I guess a combination of like the linked list and hash tables, something like that. Uh, but you don't have to implement that. I guess in, yeah, there is this, I guess order dict in Python should just work uh, or something similar. So what does LRU and LFU stand for, you know? Yeah, the LRU is a list recently used. Uh, basically the idea is that you, um, you wanna have a, uh, have, uh, sorry, cache of things and then put the ones that are least recently used uh, on one side of the priority and then the ones that are like most recently used on one side. And then it's kind of a dynamic data structure. Like if you use one, you put it on top. And if you don't use something, it just goes gradually towards the end of the list. But you want to also be able to access any of them in, uh, I think it's constant time or something like that. So. Uh, that is, and I think ordered, yeah, order pick should be doing previous, yeah, the order that pres preserves the order. Well, it's, yeah, this is something like that, or like along the line of that should be something helpful. Yeah, that this one. is great. I would have never thought of this. Okay. Um, yeah, Python is amazing. They just, yeah. They <laughs> so, um, but the, the sort of concept of the algorithm behind the order dick is mm -hmm. probably an LFU or an LRU Dad, cache. Is that right? It is, uh, it's not like the behind algorithm behind that, but it's, I, what I would say, like, the, these are like similar concepts in the sense that. You want to have uh, uh, quick access or constant time access, right. and at the same time have an index or an order on, I guess, a set or a collection. So that's where it comes. Um, and then, um, and then LFU. Do you know what that stands for? That is least frequently used. So it's like one of them is in terms of like frequency of usage, the other on the recency. I see, right. Frequency versus um, recency, got it. Okay, great. So this solves the, um, these are great pointers for the, um, doing the quick, Francie, come on. Stop. Okay, so, um, so then, uh, very quickly, the last thing I wanted to ask is, yeah. is um, so, you know, the whole purpose of a language model is you put mm -hmm. in a phrase and you get a probability out of it. Okay. Right? Yep. So, and, and so, and they build these things on huge corpora and, um, you know, the, you know, the BERT is the sort of one of these f super fancy one that involves yeah. swimmers. But yeah. a lot of people talk about taking BERT and then, so so it, it should be really easy to use BERT to mm -hmm. um, to help me solve this problem, right? So I could generate a ton of things, and then BERT can tell me if it's high probability. Then yeah, you know, skin hurts is high probability, but skin, you know, but but um, heart is sweaty is low probability, and this should be a It'd be very accurate and I can probably even tell it, you know, right. I can take Bert 
And then, you know, there might be a rock band called um, Sweaty Heart. Mm. Oh, he has a rock band called Sweaty Heart. So that would have a, a reasonably high probability. But mm. I think, you know, I don't know much about Bert, but, but my thinking is that you bolt a layer on after it, and that's the layer that learns context. So, yeah, sure, Sweaty Heart is basically reasonably probable, but in a medical context, it's not probable, right? And so you adapt. Yeah. So, right, is that a, a, a an approach that's likely to work or might work or, well, probably won't work? Yeah, so um, I guess if you want to use that, you can um, fine-tune birds on the data that you're ge generating from this grammar, which is, because that is trained on like a huge data set and it's pretty generic language model. And then you can fine-tune it on a specific, you know, um, focus domain. And then that should be giving much precise results in terms of this particular domain. Right. And then, and this must be like something that there's tons of stuff on the internet on how to do this. Sorry? There, there yeah. Must, yeah. 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 There's tons. And, and so, and, um, and I can use TensorFlow or Keras. Yeah. Yeah. TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch. Um, you can check in. Uh, there was this group uh, called, um, Hugging face. Yes. They had a lot of you know different models and pipelines for using different language models, pre-training them, fine-tuning. I don't know if they're still active, but at the time they were like one of the most active ones. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand how they make money if they they give all the stuff away. Yeah. <laughs> Startup by some wunderkind, a German guy. I think I heard him speak once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so okay great uh so yes oh yeah yeah. To... yeah yeah that, that so that's that's great awesome have to go but it was uh great to talk to you again yeah hope, and maybe we'll do another one on, yeah. on new ranking of news feeds um yeah sure i'll, I'll think about it okay okay yeah. well en enjoy your virtual view <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay. okay. Um, uh, talk to you. Oh, yep. See you later. Yeah. Bye.